Welcome back to the final video on this exploration of the field extension q adjoined squared of 7 over q. We're going to look at part c of this question, which is to find the elements of the Galois group q adjoined root 7 over q. So recall that means we're going to look for automorphisms of q adjoined the squared of 7, which act as the identity element on the rational numbers. In the previous video, we found that 1 and the square root of 7 forms a q basis of q adjoining the square root of 7. Okay, that means that if we have some Galois automorphism, it's called sigma, q adjoining root 7 over q, then we know exactly what sigma does as long as we know what it does to that q basis. So we just need to know what is sigma of 1 and what are sigma of the square root of 7? Well, 1 is a rational number. So since rational numbers are fixed by these Galois automorphisms, we know sigma of 1 is 1. So now we just need to know what is sigma of the square root of 7. And, well, there's a couple of options. So we know that if I applied sigma to 7, I would get 7, because 7 is rational. Uh, but the square... 7 is the square root of 7 squared. And since sigma is an automorphism, it's going to commute with this exponentiation. So I can write this as sigma of root 7 quantity squared. And so whatever sigma of root 7 is, when I square it, I get 7. And there's only two ways to square a real number and get 7. Namely, it could be root 7, or it could be negative root 7. So there's just these two options. Now, if sigma of the square root of 7 was equal to the square root of 7, it was also the case that sigma of 1 was 1. That would mean that sigma fixes the basis, so it must fix everything. So this would tell you that sigma was actually the identity map on q adjoined square root of 7, which is definitely an automorphism. All right, uh, what's the other option? The other option is that sigma of the square root of 7 is equal to negative the square root of 7. All right, so in that case, we could even more generally write down, if I took an arbitrary element of q adjoining the square root of 7 and applied sigma to it, well, sigma is not going to affect the a, because a is rational. It's not going to affect the b, because b is rational. And the root 7 becomes a negative root 7. So I'll get a minus b root 7. Now, since I've defined sigma on the basis, I know it's going to extend to a linear transformation of q adjoin the square root of 7. The only thing left to show is that it's multiplicative. So if I multiplied two elements together, I want to make sure that sigma does, uh, it preserves the structure. So if I multiply first, then I'll get AC plus 7BD plus AD plus BC root 7. And when I apply sigma to this sum, it's simply going to replace it the same sum but with a minus in the middle. All right. And what if I did these individually? So I have a plus b root 7, I apply sigma, and then I apply sigma to c plus d root 7. So this would be the same thing as a minus b root 7 times c minus d root 7. And expanding, I get a c minus minus is plus 7bd. OK, that aligns nicely. And then I have minus AD and minus BC, so that'll be minus AD plus BC root 7. All right, so those two match, therefore sigma is multiplicative, and we already showed that it was uh, additive since it was, um, uh, since we defined it on a basis, we knew it would extend uh, linearly to a transformation, so that gave us the additivity. So therefore, this sigma, which is the conjugate 
right? Sending a plus b root 7 to a minus b root 7 is a Galois automorphism. Oops. One more is a Galois automorphism. Okay, so this tells us that the Galois group, q adjoining the square root of 7 over q, has precisely two maps in it. One is the identity map and one is the conjugation map.